John was a live wire. John really wanted to be a Marine and be with the boys. He was the first enlisted Marine in World War II to receive the Medal of Honor. He just had a legion of fans, even among the other Marines there, and of course the ones in his platoon. He was from a very solid Italian family, and they had a lot of real good values. John was a very warm person, and he embraced everyone, you know, by his good nature. And he was very much like his mother. His mother was very outgoing. We went to St. Bernard's Roman Catholic School. John's nickname was Bazzy, B-A-S-S-Y. Everybody called him, hey, Bazzy here, hey, Bazzy there. Short for Basalone. And you could kid with him, you know, because he went right along with you. John was just an average American guy trying to get through the Depression, get settled down. John was looking for a job in the, in the worst way. He had to do something, so he tried the Army out. After he put his time in with the Army, he joined up with the uh, Marines. He figured he'd be more action there. <laughs> That's the type he was. He was stationed in Manila with the Army, and he pulled some pretty wild liberties in Manila that he got the nickname Manila John Baslow. He liked liberty. He liked to play. We went on liberty, he had a big time. But when he came back, he was all duty. John Baslow was a machine gun section leader. Now, this is a job that in that era was basically like being a very skilled foreman of a very technical trade. We were under his instructions as tutelage, as young Marines, learning how to maneuver, fire, and maintain a, a 30 caliber machine gun. He really taught us all how to swing the tripod around the back of your neck and grab it by the legs and, and go with it. You could blindfold him, you could strip it down, put it back together. It was fantastic what he knew about the machine gun. He carried the aura of being the first enlisted Marine to receive the Medal of Honor. He was awarded that decoration at the epic Battle of Guadalcanal an event that all Americans believed was the, one of the finest hours the country had ever known. We had uh, a tough time in Guadalcanal. In October, we were pretty well pinned down. When the Japanese hit us on this particular night, October 24, 25, they hit right in the A Company. I saw John twice that night. It was constant fighting. I kept getting word of John was doing some miraculous things up on his end fixing machine guns in pitch black dark and him doing it by his fingers. John piled them up around his gun pretty heavy. I was acting first sergeant at the time and wrote up the citation. He was sort of in awe that he got the Medal of Honor. They immediately brought him back to the States because they needed to pump up the war bond sales. They kind of put the squeeze on him to go sell war bonds. He really didn't want to go. John was a pretty famous individual. He traveled with movie stars. The girls, they'd all crowd around him. They took him to his hometown of Raritan, New Jersey, and 50,000 people turned out for his parade. It was a sea of humanity. All you could see were faces. They were shoulder to shoulder. You couldn't move. Once you got in the crowd, you just couldn't move. See on a curb here in Raritan. I knew something special was happening. The roar of the crowd, the enthusiasm. I'd never seen a prayer like that in my entire life. And John made a speech. I want to thank you, Judge Algard, and these very good home folks of Raritan for this wonderful gift. It's for all my buddies overseas and the front lines that they really appreciate everything you, people, you wonderful people are doing by backing the attack and buying these war bonds. They presented John with a $5,000 war bond. There were all types of festivities. I was in the Boy Scouts. I was a shy boy, so I was underneath the stands when my mother and father went, were on the car. Knowing him before and after the medal, there was very little change in his disposition, his 
attitude. You'd have never known from his lips that he had a Medal of Honor. He hanging around his neck when they had a parade, and that was it. He uh, got tired of bond sales quick. He didn't really like making speeches. He was a Marine. He wasn't a salesman. He did a certain amount of it and walked into an officer and said, I want the fleet again, it meaning the fleet Marine force. And that's when he went back. The Commandant got him transferred and sent him to Camp Pendleton. We were really close buddies. Almost every weekend, we'd catch the train and go to LA. He didn't have any trouble finding dates or anything. Lena cured all that. Lena was pretty well under control woman. She kind of was in charge, I think. <laughs> she was in charge among the women Marines in the kitchen, and she was in charge with him. One day, he called my father, and he said, send me $500. I'm going to get married. The wedding was a short wedding. It wasn't a long affair. It was a fun time, and it was a great group. But I was best man. She loved him, and I know that he really loved her. It was John's desire to go back and be with the boys. And when we shipped out, it was full-time service. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that uh, he and I would be reunited on the beach at Iwo Jima. I went in on the initial wave. I think John went in on the fourth. I was about three quarters way up the hill to where we flattened out when I heard him hollering and coming up behind us. He's kicking people and cussing them and telling them, get off the beach, get going. He joined us and we moved on up and did our turn to, towards the airport. Basilon and I and about 15 other guys take off up to the airport. We made it all the way to the airport and went down into the first revetment. John said something about, you better bring the guys back. We're getting a lot of shell fire. And we take refuge in this big shell hole. Vaseline says, you guys stay here. I'm going to go back and get more troops. And he left us there. And he told us, stay here come hell or high water. And he went back. And I don't know how long he was gone. In our dismay and horror, Vaseline was killed in the first couple of hours of combat on Iwo Jima. The word really spread fast all over the island that Basilone was dead. It's like something you couldn't believe. How could this happen to our hero? He was killed on February 19th, 1945. But about a week or so later, we got the word. I remember the police chief in Raritan coming around town in a loudspeaker announcing that John Basilone was killed in action at Iwo Jima and the church bells at St. Anne's, where he went to school, were ringing. In 1948, the statue of John Bassalone is dedicated in Raritan, New Jersey. And Lena came out a year later, and she met John's family at the statue. They also went to the commissioning of the United States John Bassalone. If you go to Raritan, his hometown, you don't have any trouble finding Bassalone Memorial. They have a Barcelona parade. It's a big thing. The whole state comes. There won't be anybody like him. You know, he, he was really a gung-ho Marine. He came from nothing and to greatness. I think that's what we all honor, the guy that didn't have anything that made it. He just went off and became great, became a world hero. You know, a whole country honored him.